You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to the Options Playbook, the program where we break down cutting-edge option strategies and explain how you can incorporate them into your own portfolio. Whether you're looking to grow your capital with some offensive maneuvers or protect your investments with defensive plays, you can find them all in the Options Playbook. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA, and SIPC. Now, let's open the playbook and get started. Welcome to Options Playbook Radio. I'm your host, Brian Overby, Ally Invest Senior Options Analyst and author of the Options Playbook. Well, last week, the FANG stocks, the bulk of the FANG stocks announced earnings, and uh, you had two of the real big players uh, in the FANG. We had Google, we had Amazon. We talked about Amazon in last week's podcast, and we went in and looked at a butterfly uh, approximately the expected move out of the money, um, a little bit, little bit further out than that overall, and we did it as a ratio butterfly. We've talked about a lot of skip strike butterflies here on Options Playbook Radio, and as always, you can find those strategies by going to optionsplaybook.com. Both of them that we're talking about the ratio, uh, the the ratio butterfly that we talked about last week actually isn't highlighted specifically inside the Options Playbook. Um, but it would be referred to as a Christmas tree. Uh, the only difference here is that uh, we actually did this uh, ratio butterfly for a net credit to the account. And usually when you do that, you do add additional risk. Uh, butterflies aren't free in general in the marketplace if you do a standard butterfly. So uh, we just modified it a little bit. And by using the ratio factor of the butterfly, we're able to get it done for a solid net credit to the account. Uh, we did a 20 point wide butterfly. We brought in a $1.10 net credit. Now this is all on paper. And as always, this is not meant to be a recommendation. We're just trying to learn. And it's all about trying to apply the option strategy to the conditions of the marketplace. And that's what Options Playbook Radio is all about. Uh, you can say, this is the underlying, this is what's going on. These are some strategies that you might consider if you see that situation again, um, that, that simple. So in this instance, uh, we had Amazon trading at 3,392.49 on the day that we taped Options Playbook Radio. That was a Wednesday. The market had closed. It was up just over $16 on that day. Uh, we went out and bought the 3,600 call sold the 3620 call and bought the 3640 call. So in that instance, uh, we were quite a bit out of the money. And we're saying, well, if it comes up to that range and it lands at 3620, well, the expected move was about 126 uh, plus or minus. Remember, expected move has nothing to do with direction overall. So we wanted to be safe. We got out of the money. And the fact that we could go that far out of the money and we could do this one by three by two 
ratio butterfly and bring in a net credit of a dollar to the account, that meant that if the stock just stayed where it was at, if it uh, just went up the expected move, this these option contracts could expire worthless and we would be just fine. Maximum we could make is if it actually closed right at expiration on October 29th at uh, 36.20, which is right where our short strike was at, then we would we had the potential to make another two thousand dollars on our one by three by two butterfly. So you had a lot of scenarios that worked out okay for you. Worst case scenario, and where the risk would come in, is if uh, Amazon gapped open from three thousand three hundred ninety two and gapped above. 3640, which was our longest strike, that's when the risk came in. Because ideally, by doing a one by three by two butterfly, you are selling a short spread to pay for the long spread. So you have $2,000 of additional risk that you brought into that position. But by doing that, that meant that everything from 3620 on down, right, below that strike that we sold made this butterfly a profitable position. All right. So what happened? Well, we had, I, I wrote down the numbers. I went and looked at the chart and I wrote it down. Uh, they did announce earnings on, on Thursday, which would have been the 28th. And Apple, or I'm sorry, Amazon opened down. Apple did announce earnings last week too. But uh, Amazon opened down. Uh, and it was a little bit more than the expected move, but not a ton. Uh, the market closed on Thursday at 3,446. And it opened almost to the penny at 3,300. So it made the math easy for me. Um, so I basically opened down 146 points. Now, on a percentage basis, that's not a huge move. I mean, we're talking 4% or so uh, overall. So just keep that in mind. But it, these are the type of gap openings you can have, uh, especially on stocks like Amazon or any of the large priced FANG stocks. Um, uh and so you always want to be kind of cognizant of that and, and look at trades that uh, give you some protection overall. Now, uh, is it possible that it could have opened up double the expected move? Yes. And it, and it has happened to me on some of these trades just in my own personal trading overall. But one of the things that you want to do is if you, you just don't want to be asleep on the one day uh, that these options have to live. You want to uh, be in your account. You want to trade it. If the market really did open and skyrocketed through all of our strikes on the upside, we just want to close the trade. We want to, you know, take our crumpins and and just move on overall. So uh, that trade worked out. Uh, you know, right now, interesting enough, if I just look at a quote on Amazon, it's almost back to where where we started when we looked at this trade. So let me pull up AMZN. So we did the trade, we were at 3,392, and right now we are actually up. It's 3,456. It's up $72 on the day, which is about 2% in this instance. So with that said, the market all came back. Now, if we had actually did the butterfly and gave ourselves another week, which that's ideally we we really don't, we wouldn't have wanted to do that overall. I mean, one of the big benefits of Amazon is that they not always seem to announce on a Thursday and the options have one day to live. So uh, the, you have all this premium in these option contracts and it's got to be gone by the next day because you have a high price stock. You have a volatile situation that is known as earnings and that adds to premiums. And by Friday, the next day, they have all that premium has to come out. So uh, just interesting enough. Uh, so with that said, it's al already back up. It's already above where it was before it announced earnings. So it just turns out that in hindsight, that was just a buying opportunity as far as Amazon was concerned. All right. So this week, um, I, I'm going to talk about a long call. Uh, there's a situation that has happened in the Russell 2000 index. Uh, and we were going to talk about the actual ETF that tracks that, the good old IWM. 
So if you look at the IWM and you are a chartist, and and once again, I'm going to emphasize that this is not meant to be a recommendation overall, but there was a very clear defined pattern that I'm sure you're going to see in uh, if you look on the TV and you watch some of the financial news, there's going to be people that will be talking about this overall just because it's been setting itself up for such a long time. Uh, basically, the Russell 2000 index, had, well, let's say IWM, which is the, the, the very liquid ETF that trades around it. Uh, going all the way back, I guess the channel would have started uh, in January, at the beginning of January, first half of January, all of a sudden we kind of broke out into a channel and it's been trading in a 25 point range, uh, from, from that day, uh, all the way up until now, we finally had a, a, a solid breakout, uh, just the other day. As a matter of fact, we talked about this in detail. Now this breakout was just it, it's so obvious that obviously this is a podcast. I can't show it to you, but if you just take the time to look at a six month chart, you you would see it very easily uh, if you've ever looked at a chart before. Um, but uh, we talked about this on the stock play of the day on the Ally YouTube channel. Very simple, Google Ally YouTube channel, and in our stock play of the day, we talked about the potential for the breakout and. Uh, and the fact that, that that makes you a little nervous because it hadn't broken out at that point in time. And you are always, every time it comes up and touches that level, eventually you're hoping that it will, will do what you want the stock to do if you're a bull. And so we're going to say, well, the breakout happened. So let's talk about how might we play the IWM after the, it broke out from a six-month, 25-point wide channel. And that gives me an opportunity to talk about options. Very, or I'm, I'm sorry, just buying calls. Very rarely do we do uh, just call buying because, uh, first of all, the show would be very boring if all we did was just talk about, hey, let's buy some calls today, uh, not giving you any insight as to why we have 40 different strategies inside the options playbook. Um, but with that said, yeah, if I'm buying an out of the money call, which we're actually going to do today, and how would I approach that? What am I looking for when I'm buying out of the money calls as opposed to an in the money call option? So this would be when I'm thinking of out of the money calls, I always think of it as a pure speculative play. This isn't investing dollars per se, right? So I don't want to go overboard using the leverage. We're going to talk about just buying one call option today. But if I'm buying out of the money call options, when I do that, most of the time, I'm going to err to the side of buying too much time. So it time does cost money, but as opposed to things like spreads, which we've talked about a lot, when you buy a spread, a long call spread, let's say, for example, you are buying an in the money or let's say a more expensive option. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the money, but we usually set them up that way on Options Playbook Radio, but you're buying an option contract that wants the market to go up, and that's the more expensive option contract, but you're selling a less expensive option contract, same expiration, that wants the market to go down. So your time frame when you're doing a long call spread has to be a little bit more accurate because if you're correct on your forecast, you don't want it to happen too fast because that short option contract will eat away at some of your profits on the long option contract. Why? The short option wants the market to go down. So what do you really need when you do a long call spread? You need to be correct closer to the expiration date in order to get maximum value for being right on your forecast. That is not the case with long calls. Everybody knows that overall. Uh, in general, if I'm doing a long call, I want to be right right away. But I, but it, I have the benefit of not needing to worry about getting the timing right. On, on it because if it moves right away, that's great. And if it moves later on, that's not quite as good, but it's still great, right, <laughs> overall. So I err to the side of going a little bit further out of the money. We have the IWM, the ETF that tracks the Russell, trading at 239.56. Uh, the area where it was looking to try to break out and set some new highs for the first time in six months. Uh, 
what well i guess now it's about 10 months overall um if we say if we're looking at the the the, the spot where we were looking for the breakout we're talking about around the 230 area on this underlying stock and the market so let's call it it's trading for fairly close to the 240 area now do you see some more upside who knows we we, we broke out right you you hope that you get some support now now that you've broken out you hope that 230 level will support the marketplace who knows if it'll come back and retest it um if it did uh, that would even be a more bullish sign if it did provide some support but the width of the channel was about 25 points so if you just do some good old-fashioned technical analysis you're gonna say that well uh we've had a 10 point move to the upside potential move based off of the the previous channel that was set is about a 25 point move so we're going to buy something about five points out of the money give ourselves potential uh, we're not risking a ton on here and one thing that's also happened with the iwm and the marketplace in general we had a big fed fed meeting this week and that news is out but we see that the vix index is uh, trading at very at lo lower lower range levels uh, nowadays, and also that is happening with the IWM. The IWM is, if you look at the Russell Volatility Index, which is our VX instead of IVX for the VIX or VIX, I'm sorry for the VIX. It is our VX for the Russell, and that's trading down around. Uh, 22%, which is the lower end of the range, which kind of makes sense. We just set a new high, and uh, there was a little bit of a spike up going into the Fed announcement, but that, that announcement has happened. And we also see the VIX you know, down around 15.5%, so that actually came off a little bit too overall. And the timing, based off of that information, we have lower implied volatility. We just broke out. Markets have been fairly strong at the end of October. Um, Russell has been the one stock that has been a laggard. But with that said, it is the most volatile index uh, overall. It's one of the hardest indexes to really kind of establish trend lines and, and charts overall. It just kind of, it, it's kind of a wild card in general. Um, so what strike are we going to buy? Well, we're going to go 43 days thinking that this will be about a two week trade. And we're going to buy the 245 strike December 17 call option. So the 245 strike December 17th expiration, that expiration is 2021, 43 days remaining till that expiration date, uh, call option. And we're going to get about a 38 delta. And we are going to, uh, the ask price right now is $3.84. It's a two point two cent wide spread. So we're just going to buy that one at the market. Not going to really mess around with it too much. Uh, and that's one of the things that's great about the Russell or the IWM is that you have really tight option markets to go along with really tight ETF markets on that underlying overall. So. What happens when we go a little bit out of the money and we go a little bit further out in time? Well, you get a little bit more Delta. So Delta, we, we talk about Delta and I know on Options Insider Radio, uh, the concepts of Delta uh, are, are talked about day in and day out. We have a great section inside the Options Playbook, just a, a one page, very simple, straightforward read that covers all the Greeks, but focuses on Delta. But now, with Delta, if you're out of the money, you, you think about Delta as being the probability of the option finishing, and I'm going to say one cent in the money. It's not the probability of making money, but the probability of the option finishing one cent in the money gives you a hint as to where the Delta should be. And in this instance, if, you give your, if you're out of the money and you go out further in time, you get more Delta. Why? Because you give it more time for the stock to get to that level. And we're out of the money right now. So, we're, you know, we're hoping, we're, we're hoping that we can get up to our strike price. So as I go shorter in time and we go to the 240 strike and we go down to like a seven-day option contract or 10-day or, or option contract, Delta is going to get a lot smaller. And that's just because the probability of it finishing in the money with only 10 days remaining versus 43 
is a lot lower. So we go up further in time. We pay a little bit more for the time, but our rewards are we get a slower rate of time decay. We get a slower tra- uh, a slower uh, theta, as far as the Greeks are concerned. We have to pay up for it, and that adds additional risk, if it, especially if you're just considering one contract, just buying one contract. You're going to obviously pay more uh, to go further out in time on the 245 strike than, than to buy the shorter. Time is money. and uh, But the trade-offs are slower theta, higher delta. We're going to get more delta on that position overall. Okay. So for the first time in a long time on Options Playbook Radio, we found a situation where you might want to consider buying out-of-the-money call options. And uh, we talked a lot about it on the stock play of the day on the Ally YouTube channel. So this is the first time I'm really pushing it. You might want to go on over and actually look at the chart. We have that video avail- available for you. There is a playlist inside the Ally YouTube channel. And guess what? That's going to be it for this edition of Options Playbook Radio. If you have a topic you'd like us to discuss on the show or a question you'd like us to answer on the program, you send them directly to me at the options guy at invest.ally.com. Thanks for listening. We'll be back at the same time, same place next week. Until then, may all the options you bought finish in the money and all the ones you sold finish out. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>